first thing we got to do is set up our job. So click setup, new setup. And this was a little confusing at first because, and I don't like this, but they Fusion 360 is using the full extent of the model, but easy to fix. One of the things, the first things we'll do is we'll click on model orientation will be from a selected point. And we just click on this ring and that establishes the center and the top as our XYZ zero, perfect. And then on model, we'll actually click this and that's going to reduce it down. And under stock, we're actually gonna do what I already have typed in here, which is we're gonna start with a, a block that's a little bit bigger um, in the Y than the ending part. And you'll see that here in a second when we machine it. And that's important for the 2D adaptive that we're about to do. So click OK and you can see our stock. First operation is just that, 2D adaptive clearing. I'm gonna to use tool 49, which is the new 3 quarter inch uh, hog shear. So uncheck, I don't know why what tool type it is, but 49, and we'll take a look. Basically 4,000 RPMs, 40 inches a minute. We can run it a little bit faster, but I'm taking it a little easy. And under geometry, I'm just gonna select this bottom face, and we will leave 10 thou on the sides, none on the bottom. What else? And then we need to say maximum load, 0.2 width, 0.2 depth see what we get here. It looks good. We'll simulate it at the end and I think that'll be okay. Now I'm going to first drill this center hole and I'll use it, do it with a half inch drill. So number nine, click OK. And we can, we can peck it, full retract it, and that's fine. Click OK. And actually the only thing I'm going to do is stay above the bottom height, whole bottom, I'm going to offset that point of 2. And then what we'll do is we're going to do a 2D adaptive clearing with a quarter inch end mill, tool 31. And doo -doo -doo, no stock to leave. Multiple depths of say point 0.875, 0.88. You know what? In theory, good etiquette. This is a this is a roughing op. So we'll leave ten thou. We'll come in with a finish pass. So click OK. Pre-drill. Let's see. If, well, let's see where it goes. Yeah. So I don't want it to do the ramp because we've already drilled, and that's a waste of time. So we'll change it from a ramp to a, a pre-drill, and choose that, and see if that just plunges us straight down. Hopefully, yep, perfect. Now right click and do create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. And that's going to immediately save all of our settings and go ahead and give us this final pass. I just wanna make sure we're only doing it in one depth of cut. I think so, let's just click okay and see. Nope, I missed it, passes. Oh, that's why. Multiple depths. Perfect. Just a few last things. We do want to go ahead and profile around that part. So that was off of this first one. We'll right click, derived operation, 2D contour. We'll select that tool 31 and uncheck the depths and that'll clean up our outside and let's just make sure we've got the right order here. So, yep, 31, 31, 31. Last but not least, we've just got to drill a couple holes. So drilling, that's here, here, and here. We'll spot them first. Right click, duplicate. And now we will drill all the way through with a number seven drill, which was, sorry, number seven drill number four for me. I don't know why I did that. And we want to go, we'll change the heights, whole top, all the way through the model bottom. Zero. And what we'll do is deep drilling, full retract. Looks good to me. Now this is kind of cool. If we turn off the model and we go ahead and 
I think if we simulate it and turn off the stock, you can see the little black divots, and those represent the, um, actually here we'll just do it, those represent the PEC points, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, turn that back on. And last but not least, we will do a 2D contour in this pocket and in that pocket with, uh, we'll do it with a quarter inch to clean those up. Perfect. Let's simulate this and see what she looks like. Looks good on the 2D adaptive on the sides. Here's our PEC out the uh, center of that bigger hole. Cleans that up, cleans up the outside of our whole part, and then spots, PECs all the way through here. Oops, got to make sure it goes all the way through there. And then the clean up. Let's go make some chips. This is a new uh, Tool 31 for me. This is a Lakeshore Carbide 3 flute, and I love it. It makes a much better chip. We're running it a lot more aggressive. Normally 5,130 inches a minute. Um, it, right here, it's at 21 inches a minute. But great surface finish and uh, something I'm excited to talk about in the upcoming series on uh, carbide flueing.
Here's our part. Let's see how she goes together. Awesome, just like so. So he'll be able to use different dowels. Oh, I forgot to put a hole and uh, thread hole in right there. I'll go do that here in a second. And then he can pull dowels at different lengths in and out. This is relatively small, compact, easy to travel with. It looks a little bit better, and he can rock away and make his prints. Hope everybody enjoyed that episode of NYC CNC. Stick around right now. We're going to show some footage from Graham of making this print absolutely amazing and again Graham thank you very much we also actually first are going to show opening the package and the print that he made us really cool stuff but uh, with that folks glad to be here in the new shop back in the saddle take care see you soon Oh my gosh. Guys, look at that. Oh my god. Other than other, other than some tool deflection, I'm just kidding. Um, that is awesome.